and welcome to Melodies of Life. I'm your host, Anna Enkia. Today's episode is about shame. We have all felt shame at one time or another. Maybe you were teased for mispronouncing a common word or for how you looked in a bathing suit or perhaps a loved one witnessed us telling a lie. Shame is an uncomfortable sensation we feel in the pit of our stomach when it seems we have no safe haven. From the judging eyes of others, we feel small and bad about ourselves and wish we could vanish. Most people think shame is a way to create change in someone. The reality is it's the opposite. Shame brings people back to dysfunctional behavior over and over. And most of the people find themselves holding on to mistakes, shortcomings, failure, misstep, or imperfection. Is that you? These things get heavy over time and take up a lot of space and energy if we hold on and, lo- and don't let go of them. And men and women manifest shame differently and also the age affect how people experience it. So depending if you're young or old or wherever age you are. So, and people often ask if shame and guilt as if they are the same and they sometimes speak as if they are the same, but they're not. The difference is that when we feel shame, we view ourselves in a negative light. I have done something terrible. When we feel guilty, we view a situation, a particular action negatively. I did something wrong. And we feel guilty because our action affected someone else and we feel responsible. If you are a shame-prone individual who's uh, reprimanded for being late to work after a night of heavy drinking, might be likely to think, oh my God, I'm such a loser. I just can't get it together, right? When you feel ashamed um, or when we feel whatever that could be, we turn our attention inwards, focusing mainly on the emotions rolling within us and attending less to what's going on around us. If you're a guilt, guilt-prone guilt individual, you are more likely to think, oh my God, I feel bad for showing up late. Oh, I inconvenienced my coworkers and God knows whatever thoughts goes around in your head. So when we feel guilty, we turn our gaze outward and we seek strategies to reverse the harm we think we have done. And then we have something called deceptive people and they are full of shame. And now you're going to ask me, what's the difference? I'm confused. Let me explain. If a friend invites you to a dinner party at her house, she proudly asks you how you like her new pasta dish that she made for you. Your thought is, oh my God, it's greasy, disgusting. But you respond with a dodge saying, wow, this is amazing. I have never tasted anything like that before. You are such an amazing cook. I'm so proud of you. This is so good, right? Deceptively implying you enjoyed your meal without saying anything untrue. You misled your girlfriend without technically lying, right? But withholding important information because that would change your girlfriend's perception of the situation. And the main reason we are deceptive and afraid of being honest is to avoid conflict and we don't want to hurt somebody's feeling, right? Many people feel shameful about emotional eating and then eat more. You tell people you have started a new diet and you want to lose a few pounds after the holidays and you're really proud of yourself, right? A few weeks later, you fall back into the pattern of bad eating habits and fall even deeper this time. And then you feel shame and because people's going to question about you. Oh, what happened that you were on a diet and I haven't seen you lost any weight and it's been like three weeks and they have an expectation, right? And then you promised yourself you will exercise more this new year and you beat yourself up because the first time you miss your workout because you had to stay late at work, you're tired, you had some blah, blah, blah going on with family, or you got to pick up your kids. There's a lot of things that comes in the way, right, to make you miss your workout. 
And then you feel shame about it because now everyone has an expectation that you were starting this exercise routine and you were supposed to lose all that weight and now you feel shame because you failed, right? And this is what shame does. It keeps our mind and body stuck in old patterns and we just keep repeating it. So now you're going to ask yourself, so where do we begin to change, right? It's not easy, But the first thing you can do is to make a list of everything you feel shame and guilt about. And that's a very difficult one to do because you really have to be honest with yourself and not hold back. And even if you have to put it down in a journal and then lock it in somewhere so nobody can see it. But when you work with yourself, you really have to be honest because you're having the conversation with you, not with anybody else. It's just you and your journal. And then consider who was impacted by these actions because shame and guilt affect both ourselves and others, right? Write down the names of the people involved and then explore how your behavior served them. I know this sounds crazy, but I want you to look for the upsides they received, right? That's difficult, but try it. You might not see benefits right away because your mind and thoughts going to keep having excuses and misleading you and justify and whatever's going to go on in your mind. But I want you to keep digging until you find them because there's always benefits. We just refuse to see them. Then I want you to ask yourself, if you had done the exact opposite action that you felt guilt or shame about, how would that have been a drawback to that person, right? So if you have an assumption that your behavior has more drawbacks than benefit to somebody, you will carry guilt. There's no way around it. And you will beat yourself up thinking that there's something wrong with you. So you need to, or actually, so we have to be clearing the inner shame that will allow you to have a more loving and appreciative relationship with others and reducing your reactive responses when they trigger feelings of shame and guilt within you. Shame and guilt are both self-minimizing position. It is a persona or a mask people wear when they assume they are more drawbacks than benefit to something that they have done. I believe that there is absolutely no reason at all for anyone to hold on to shame or guilt. I don't care what it is, what have happened. I just don't believe there is a reason. I have worked with so many people and, you know, just after a few minutes, we resolve all that. So because I always explain to my clients that we have been taught the moral ideas Uh, the unrealistic expectation to be one-sided. And what I mean by one-sided is that we are in a society, you always have to be nice. God forbid that you raise your voice or you say something mean, right? You can never be mean. That's one-sided because sometimes we are going to be nice and sometimes we are going to be mean because we are humans, right? We cannot change that. And we cannot always be kind and never be cruel because it's inhuman. We have to be both. And there are situations that it serves both sides. We cannot just be one-sided. And the same that it comes with, oh, you always have to be peaceful, stop being wrathful or whatever the nonsense people (laughs) throw out of their mouths. And because sometimes you are going to be peaceful and sometimes you're going to be wrathful. That is just being humans. And we have to be both sides. You can't just have one without the other. It's like you asking me, you know, there's two sides of a magnet, right? If I tell you, remove the one side of the magnet, you're going to tell me it's impossible because a magnet, you have to have the positive and the negative. We can't have one without the other, correct? And that's the same when people say, oh, you always have to have positive thinking. Positive thinking, that's all I see on the social media, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm so sick of it. And you can never be negative or avoid negative people and avoid negative this and negative that, right? Yes, we do have to avoid, but we also have to teach people why they are negative, how we can turn in those negative situations into a more positive or more beneficial side or life, right? We cannot just say, don't be negative, always be positive because it's impossible. We have to help them to understand and show a different way of being, right? These unsustainable illusion disempower people. No matter what people say, that's the truth. And leading people to shame and guilt when they don't meet these unattainable standards. True perfection lies in embracing both sides of life, not not the one-sided utopias that you're being taught every single day, throw it in the garbage, because the journey of life has many, many setbacks, but what truly matters is your comeback, your ability to bounce back, and even when you find yourself at your lowest point. I have been there many times, but guess what? I'm just like a bouncy ball. You threw me in the floor, I will bounce up. That is who I am, and that's a choice I make. Your comeback reflects on your resilience and determination to overcome obstacles relying on your inner strength. That is also a choice we make because we can have excuses and choose to be victims and we can choose to be on the ground or we can choose to be the bouncy ball that, yes, we fall to the ground, but we bounce straight back up. So during your lowest points, when you feel the weakest, it can be challenging to find strength needed to propel forward. And the struggle is real and it's okay to acknowledge it and then move forward. But don't have the excuse to stay down there and, and, and keep running your story while you keep staying down on the floor. And because if you think like this instead, what might happen if you let go of the belief that keeps you stuck, struggling and stressed and keeps you down on the floor? Think about that for a second, because your true change comes internally. When you realize you're living out your childhood uh, childhood conditioning that formed your programming in your mind, only you can change that. Nobody else. So many people live their life thinking and believing that who they are and where they are is the way life will always be. And that is not true. That is a limiting belief. And when you believe a limited belief, you live a lie every single day. Don't do that to yourself. Don't believe the excuses you have made up in your mind that keeps you from creating a life you love to live. Because change your mind, change your life. You are magnificent. The greatness is within you. You have to believe that. And that's a seed that you get implanted in your mind every single day moving forward. You have a choice every day to wake up and become conscious and choose a new way of being and living. That is your choice. No one else can do that for you except you. So not to, not to please someone else, not out of fear of losing someone or something, that's not being authentic. The change comes when you deeply want to be the best version of who you are. As an unhealed person, you can find offense in pretty much anything someone else does right away in a split second. As a healed person, you can understand that the actions of others have absolutely nothing to do with you. Each day, you get to decide who you want to be. We can end the dysfunctional relationship we have with ourselves and make difficult choices even when no one is watching because they're not in your mind. It's only you. That is the only way to restore yourself and free yourself from the shackles of shame. 
If you're ready for a game changer and want to rebuild your life after your setbacks, allow me to clear your inner shame by balancing your mind that will lead to profound transformation in your life. Are you ready and determined to take a leap to the best version of yourself? Why wait? There is no need to wait weeks, months, or years to dissolve your shame and guilt. I have watched people that have been beating themselves up for so many years, regretting things for decades. They can all be cleared in a few minutes. And then when I work with them, they're so shocked and they're like, oh my God, where were you 10 years ago? Uh, You see what I'm saying? And they just wasting their lives away instead of taking control and change. Change your mind, change your life. That's all it is. If you're ready for your transformation, please visit my website, Anaika Wellness. Use my code PODCASTAA and you will get your first session for $100. If you have any questions while listening, please subscribe and leave your comments and I will receive answers to your specific question. If you love it, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And please give me a review and share it. That will allow me to impact people worldwide. Thank you for listening. Love always, Anna.